name is Scats from House of Scattergood. Hi, I'm Richard Bates from Enabling Electronicals. Okay, I'm Christopher Davis from Bamboozle. This project began with an idea I had sometime last year when I was on the Come Alive with Science part of the Ignition project. Um, I wanted to design a musical instrument with a scientist which could teach children about the science of music and while that was all happening I happened to have a chat with Richard. Um, my role in the project was really to provide some science with a little bit of engineering to try and help Bamboozle and, and Scats uh, get more close communication with the children. One of the interesting challenges of working with uh, children with learning difficulties, particularly at the more severe end of the spectrum, the more profound and complex needs, or indeed the, the uh, more extreme end of the autistic spectrum, is recognising students' desire to say something or to recognise the students um, that, they're making, that they wish to make a decision but haven't perhaps got the capacity to make it in ways that we would recognise. It was very, very exciting, uh, especially from what Richard was talking about. The man's a genius, I have to say that. And uh, he put this sort of uh, idea into my head based on what I was talking about and what he was talking about and what I'd been doing on this project. And it all kind of snowballed from there. What we've been developing are some soft toy butterflies, which we're very proud of. And each butterfly has within it a little uh, standalone computer with a wireless link and some telemetry and accelerometers and other position sensors. And we've developed these specially for the project. What happens is they go together and when the child has the butterfly, they can monitor their gestures and movements in response to, to, to what Bamboozle are doing. So Bamboozle are there to enable the children in a non-judgmental space. And I'm there to try and help the children communicate. We're really interested from an artistic point of view in seeing how scientifically we can make our job easier and make the lives of the young people we work with and the teachers and parents and people communicate with them so much easier by, by being able to recognise in a measurable way exactly what it is young people are trying to say. And we developed a story whereby we could use these uh, uh, these butterflies. It was going to be a, a, the butterfly and the magic sunflower, but it ended up being a magic butterfly because stories, when they're told, get changed in the telling. And uh, gradually, this uh, this story began to develop. Pieces of music appeared, and we started working with the children over the last two days, and we've had some amazing results. The idea of the computer system is to monitor the child and the computer can learn their movements and try and disambiguate between involuntary and involuntary movements and the computer can monitor very tiny movements or very big movements and try and make a decision on whether the child is trying to communicate and what type of communication they're doing. Now young people need to have to be in a certain state I guess you can describe it in order to access opportunities and one of the things we focus on a lot with Bamboozle is to create environments that, that are free from judgement and free from fear and give young people a chance just to be. And we find that when we do less, they achieve more. And I think in creating a kind of relaxed environment for young people to be in, and for us as artists, facilitators, teachers, parents, to be in with them, um, gives them a chance to express themselves and this technology will give them give us a chance to read what they're expressing and it's great. The children have definitely shown some response and there's been a connection between what we're showing on the screen and what they were doing with the butterfly and the creative side of the, uh, uh, of the story really helped to engage them and to focus them, to calm them. The repetitive nature of some of the songs and the music um, got them excited and focused and they very much understood what was going on. I think one of the key elements of the research has been to try and characterise the movements of children for their communication. So for example, the computer will learn their habitual or normal movements 
and then also try and learn their unusual or communication movements and disambiguate between the two. So for example, uh, caregivers and performers may not notice the small movements or gestures of the child and it may take years for, for those people to actually recognise and learn them. But with this approach, the computer, being a patient thing, gathers the data and can analyse and try and look for changes, small changes or patterns within the behaviour of the child's movements and those can then be communicated and amplified to the people around them. The reactions from some of the staff who obviously work with these children very closely on a daily basis uh, was such that we knew that the things that were happening are not the sort of things that they would expect to happen every day. The focus was there for a lot longer than you, than you might normally expect in a classroom environment. Um, and so I'm, I'm really pleased with what's happened. You know. With the project at the moment, we've had the children um, controlling the number of sunflowers for farmer. But that could equally be some object in the physical world. It could be something like the curtains in their bedroom, changing the TV over, music, or even possibly some form of uh, personal mobility, possibly track following, things like that. So that's all for the future. And if we can do that, if this project can do that, so many lives are just going to be transformed, actually, completely transformed, because it'd be giving people a voice who currently struggle to get their to get their voice and their opinions heard. A child, instead of being perhaps slightly ignored or overlooked in a busy room or in a home environment which is busy, can actually shout and interact and make things happen which they previously weren't able to do. And this is one of the key elements of the technology which is near. Um, I'm, I'm just you know, blown away by, by the way it's all gone. And I hope you are too. The next stage of the project is to apply for more funding because this needs to go further on. This needs to develop into something bigger, much bigger. The amount of help that can be given to uh, the sort of children that we were working with today and also the, the children with profound and multiple learning difficulties, which was the, the aim of the project, obviously, was to, was to get to those people who really cannot uh, express themselves in a readable way to us. Um, so those kind of children are the ones I think who could benefit the most from this kind of this kind of technology and this kind of approach of working creatively and technologically side by side. Um, and there are fantastic things on the horizon. I think um, we're going to take it forward and come with us. It's going to be a fantastic journey.